I got some new fish today. I figured I would go ahead and do a, uh, a small unboxing video. Now here it goes. First thing for my salt water, I got a whole bunch of blue leg hermit crabs. The good thing about the blue leg hermit crab, of course I don't know if you can really see them because they are so small, um, is they stay very small. They don't really get to knock over rocks and they are fantastic at eating algae. So we'll put those guys right here. And then I usually keep these in stock as much as possible. These are just your uh, blue green chromis, blue slash green as in blue or green because they are kind of a, a bluish green. They, uh, these fish are very pretty but the genetics aren't really strong so you do go through a few of these. We have a skunk cleaner shrimp. The cleaner shrimp, uh, if you look at them, they have very long white antennas. And what that does, it actually advertises to fish. It's like, hey, I'm a car wash. And what will happen, the fish will swim over to this and he will hop on the fish and eat dead skin and parasites off of the fish as it swims. So if you have a very established saltwater tank, you'll see these guys actually hopping onto the fish and cleaning them. These are also called just regular cleaner shrimp. There. And then this guy is just your standard uh, yellow tail damsel. It's got a blue body with a yellow tail. I don't usually deal with damsels uh, a whole lot because they are kind of territorial and kind of aggressive. But if you have nothing but a damsel tank, it works out really well. Give me a one damsel per bag. I guess I did that for, for packaging. Y'all can see that little guy in there. They're very pretty fish. That's actually a domino damsel. It just they can be they can be kind of mean to one another and to other fish. I actually had a client who had a 280 gallon saltwater tank, and every time he put a clownfish in any kind of tank. Literally this two inch long fish was terrorizing the entire tank and wouldn't let other stuff eat and ultimately ended up stressing out the fish and killing them. And another damsel, another damsel. And right here we got a yellow tang. Ooh, this, this guy's a big one. Look at that one. Beautiful fish. So we'll go ahead and drop this guy over here. Here we got a, a coral frag. Can't really open it yet, so we'll go ahead and let it acclimate. And then we got just some regular uh, snails, some bumblebee snails, and we also got some Astria turbo snails, which is really kind of neat how they're packaging these guys now. As you can see, it's just a, a bag and there's no water in it, and there's just a wet paper towel. And what they'll do is 
just wrap up the snails and package them that way. And you can smell them. If they're dead, they'd make a very bad smell. But these don't smell bad at all, and these should be good to go. And that should be it for the salt water side, and we'll do fresh water now. Okay, here we go with the fresh water side. Got some German blue rams. I have to kind of bear with me. It's been a long day today. No, all they come in, they look good. Put those in right there. Oh, here's some of my favorite fish. Some people don't like these. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't like them, but I think they are beautiful, especially when they get to be adults. These are giant Danios. They can get about four or five inches, and um, I just think they're, they're beautiful. They get a almost a tortoise color to them, like a tortoise shell. They are dither fish. They never sit still. If you're looking for something for a community tank, uh, freshwater wise, that will add a lot of movement, those guys. Some more green fire tetras. I actually have a good amount of these now, but I like them. And I hope somebody else will come in and like them too. Ah, some blue velvet shrimp. These are really cool. These are very similar to the cherry shrimp, but they are blue. And of course, the cherry shrimp are red. Neocardinia type shrimp. They are considered like a new world shrimp. They stay small, about an inch and a half. And we got some dwarf flame grommies. And a little happy to be here, I guess. Look at those guys right here also. Some black neon tetras. Regular neon tetras are not easy to come by right now, so I got these black neon tetras. And then we can have some some panda cories. These are grape sellers. They're your uh, cory doors. They are bottom feeders. They will stay on the bottom. And if you keep your water decent, those guys reproduce pretty easily. And here's another favorite of mine. These are Siamese algae eaters. They are not Chinese algae eaters, which are not the same thing. The uh, Siamese algae eaters sometimes get confused for uh, flying fox. But these guys are great and champions at eating green hair algae. And uh, they are just great algae eaters in general. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all these in here. We're gonna let them float for about 20 minutes because the temperature just right 
and then we'll start cutting bags. I'm going to put them in the tank so we'll come back around once everything's in there. So guys, I am really excited about these fish. They all came in looking healthy. Uh, I did have one bag that didn't look real good, so I'm probably going to lose some out of that one. But uh, that is a part of it. It happens when you ship live out. And anyway, we have the lights turned down low right now. I'm going to acclimate for another 10 minutes or so. And we'll be back after I have cut the bags and put the new fish in. All right, the bags have been cut and all the fish are in. In this tank, we have the black neon tetras, some standard neon tetras, some long fin leopard uh, danios, and some zebra danios, and I believe we have some hill stream loaches in here as well. Okay, in this tank we have a few white clouds, we have some Gertrude Day rainbows. Um, today I put in the panda quarries, they are all hiding right now, but every one of them uh, were swimming out of the bag, so I think they're all going to be good. And in this tank, we got some uh, pearl grommies. We have some corridors that are actually in this grass over here. We have the dwarf flame grommies. Uh, I think that's about it in this tank. And in this tank, we have the giant danios. We have some Congo tetras. I believe we have one long fin leopard uh, danio that found its way over here. There's also a uh, a green phantom pleco and a vampire pleco in here, but they are always hiding. All right, in this tank here, we have your male guppies. We got some mollies, platies, uh, bristlenose plecos, standard plecos. Over here, we have your female guppies and some babies, and a lot of babies. Uh, we have survey tetras, green fire tetras over here. We have one uh, peacock cichlid left. We have some uh, your standard survey tetras here. These up here are actually long fin. And these are your blood fin tetras down here. And right here we have your German blue rams. And we have the blue light tetras. And over here we have a couple of fancy goldfish. All right, so this is my random uh, damsel tank. Uh, I got a couple of dominoes there. Um, there's just several different kinds in here. But this is where I keep all my damsels. In this tank, we have your uh, your Ocellaris clownfish and the blue green chromis that I was talking about earlier. There's a few frags down here, and you know, like some snails, blue leg hermit crabs that I just have that are uh, living here for right now.
And here's another saltwater tank, which you can see there's some more frags in here, some mushrooms. I have some Sri Lanka antheus. I have a six line wrasse. There's a Korean angel in there. And um, there may be some more, but there's this one. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there is the skunk cleaner shrimp right here. He's in there seeking his antenna out, trying to get fish to come over to him. And there we got our yellow tank. He is just over there patrolling the tank, looking for algae to eat. I also wanted to say thank you to Jack and Dan. They sent me some stickers. They sent me two of them, so we're gonna put one up on the window. So guys, uh, that's two stickers from uh, from the YouTube team there. So thank you to Jack and Dan uh, for sending me the sticker. And I look forward to more content from you guys, and we'll catch y'all next time. Thank you.